Today we'll find out if Halo's Master Chief, a genetically engineered super soldier from the year 2500, is possible with modern medical science. One thing is certain, John 117 is a wonder of bioengineering, but he's just science fiction. Or is he? More adaptable to augmentation. The result was the ultimate soldier. I recently came across a video entitled Most Detailed Breakdown a Spartan 2 Augmentations on the channel Installation 00. The Spartan would be capable of feats of strength and endurance far larger than a normal human. The video is very thorough and very cool. I suggest you queue it up for later. The augmentations applied to the Spartan 2 super soldiers are well thought out, and while they may take advantage of theoretical technologies, the basic ideas have roots in contemporary science. Today we'll consider each augmentation presented in Installation 00's video to determine how many of them are possible and how risky these procedures really are. Hold still Chief, the interns and I need to take a closer look at you. Master Chief, aka John 117's story begins in 2511 on the human colony world of Eridanus II. Only six years old at the time, he was selected and kidnapped from his home by the United Nations Space Command and then conscripted into the Spartan II project. Uh, don't mind us, we're just replacing this child and 75 others like him with a clone that will die in a few years, making them effectively deceased on record. So no one can ask us any questions as we perform highly experimental, mostly untested augmentation procedures in an attempt to transform them into super soldiers. Just an average Tuesday, right? You already know everything. You kidnapped them. But Spartan II mastermind Catherine Halsey was not concerned with ethics or the comfort of her conscripts. The aim of this project was to create elite soldiers, by whatever means necessary, to suppress the widespread insurgency that raged through the UNSC space. Yes, they were originally created to target other humans. And because of our success, when the Covenant invaded, we were ready. But when the Covenant attacked, the Spartans were repurposed to defend the human race against all forms of intergalactic threat. And suddenly... Nobody was concerned about why they were originally built. The Spartans saved the human race. My work saved the human race. You said that already! So, does the outcome justify the means? What did you do? What'd you do? From the ages of 16 to 14, Halsey's candidates were subjected to ruthless indoctrination and training in every aspect of war. Then at age 14 came the brutal augmentation procedures. Hey chief, did you remember to take your multivitamins today? Okay, you caught me. That wasn't in the actual cinematic, but this portion of the video is sponsored by Ritual Multivitamins and the Master Chief is going to help me to tell you about it. So one day you're captured by a strange alien overlord who only feeds you a ladle full of gruel every other day. Totally insufficient nutrition. If you had access to Ritual Essential for Men 18 Plus, an obsessively researched multivitamin made to fill in nutrient gaps, you'd significantly improve the nutrient density of your overall diet. A vitamin that provides key nutrients in clean, absorbable form is, well, key. Because let's face it, in real life, you're juggling a million things, like the fate of the galaxy, you may not always be consuming the nutrients you need for optimal function. The aliens are confused. All we feed him is gruel and yet, he's packed full of nutrients. They don't know that you've got a stash of ritual multivitamins in your molnar armor, which have a delayed release capsule design, which A, bypass the stomach and dissolve in the small intestine for optimal absorption, and B, can be taken on an empty stomach. They use some painful alien technology to try and discover your secret and your body becomes transparent. It hurts, but you laugh because they could have just looked up the info on Ritual's website. Since CEO Kat Snyder and company tell customers outright where the ingredients come from, why they're there, and how the products are validated. These aliens are creating the wrong kind of transparency. And while Master Chief is up there fighting for our continued survival, you and I can enjoy the benefits of Ritual Essential for Men 18 Plus for a long time to come. They're even doing their part with sustainable packaging. Click the link in my description to get 20% off your first month with Ritual. 
And now that the stage is set, I'd like to invite our guest lecturer, Installation00, to introduce the first augmentation. The catalytic thyroid implant is a small platinum pellet implanted in the left thyroid gland, which contains a human growth hormone. HGH, or human growth hormone, occurs naturally in the pituitary gland and influences our overall size, helping build bone and muscle. This process ramps up through childhood and peaks during puberty. Throughout life, growth hormone helps to regulate fat, muscle, tissue, and bone in our body. I lose weight, my nails. It's just like the Peter Pan drug. Currently, doctors prescribe synthetic growth hormone to help children with impaired hormone levels to reach their full height. And many athletes have taken advantage of the size building effects of the drug. I just felt like Wonder Woman on it. There are currently HGH pellets available that can be implanted beneath the skin that release the hormone gradually for approximately six months. Modern UNSC Spartan conscripts would have to undergo this procedure on a biannual basis basis to reap the benefits of the hormone. High levels of human growth hormone over an extended period of time, like say constantly from the age of 14, can produce irreversible acromegaly. But even small doses can lead to complications such as heart disease and diabetes. Children with extreme levels of growth hormone are also at risk of gigantism. But I mean, Halsey's goal was to produce a physically imposing super soldier. And if the HGH induced physical size enhancement wasn't enough, we could substitute limb lengthening procedure to add more height to our UNSC conscripts. If calibrated for maximum height, this surgery can actually add up to six inches to an individual's frame by literally cutting the bones and pulling the pieces apart systematically so that they heal longer than before. For more information on this incredible procedure, cue up my video on Jack Hanma from Baki. Jack underwent a compound procedure of all long bones in his body at once. He might actually have made an excellent Spartan. Jack Hanma cross with Master Chief? That's a scary thought. So putting on exercise is not without risks, but it's conceivable. And given the intense regimented nutrition and workout routines that conscripts are subjected to leading up to the implant, their bodies would have been as prepared as possible. Halsey and company would have maximized their return on HGH investment in the Spartans. Okay, installation 00, what's next? Spartans receive muscular enhancement injections. These injections contain a protein complex and is injected intramuscularly. These injections target the intracellular molecular machinery of the muscles and are designed to increase muscle mass and density, thus granting the Spartans near superhuman strength. And while that sounds great, it doesn't look like any fun. Professor Installation 00 dives deeper into the process in a post on a Halo forum. There is a chemical in our bodies called myostatin, which limits muscle growth to a certain size. This chemical has been bred out of certain breeds of cow, resulting in double the muscle mass, as individual muscle fibers either double in thickness or literally duplicate. Enter folostatin which inhibits the production of myostatin, effectively removing the limiter on our muscle growth. Periodic injections of this chemical can suppress myostatin, allowing our muscles to grow and grow and grow. Might as well get a pump in. Wait a minute. What's this guy want? How many 45s you got on there, little twerp? Are we here boss. trying to get strong? You, know, you think you're stronger than me? <laughs> Damn, folostatin gives you strength like that? Today, our knowledge of folostatin and its lasting effects are relatively limited, but that hasn't stopped bodybuilders and others interested in prolonging youthfulness and longevity, such as biohacker and author Dave Asprey in experimenting with the protein. An article on Asprey's website claims that, according to limited human research, a folostatin supplement can increase muscle growth up to 200%. And no, I'm not suggesting that you run out and take folostatin. He said, limited human research. The process equates to increased strength, endurance, and recovery time in the Spartans, and also strengthens their connective tissues and tendons. However, Halsey logged a 5% risk of fatal cardiac volume increase, meaning that there is a chance that the heart is incapable of keeping up with the blood volume required by the enhanced muscles. So far, if negative complications don't arise, we've got a bunch of very large, very strong, teenage weapon humans on our hands. Play zombies for target practice. This isn't your average summer camp. What's next, you ask? The occipital lobe is the visual processing center of the brain. And a brain surgeon is going to access it by cutting a hole in the back of the skull to perform occipital capillary reversal, 
which reverses blood flow in the capillaries located there, boosting blood flow to the retinas of the eyes. The surgery results in a marked visual perception increase, the ability to see in near perpetual darkness, finer levels of detail. Capillaries are the smallest blood carrying structures of the circulatory system, and the surgeon will rearrange them to supply more oxygenated blood to the rods and the cones of the retinas, which contain light sensitive pigments and allow us to see. Why don't you explain this to me like I am an eight year old? Giving the visual processing unit more power as it were. Thank you. If it sounds complicated, uh, well, it is. Of all the augmentations we have examined thus far, this seems the most far-fetched. There has been limited research in the field of capillary blood flow reversal in general, let alone in the brain and in the eyes. In the 1950s, it was theorized that reversal of capillary blood flow is possible, and several doctors set out to see what they could find. Experiments conducted on cats and dogs showed that capillary blood flow would reverse in mesenteric capillaries, following the connection of an artery to a vein, providing that collateral veins and arteries were obstructed. The blood must be permitted to leave the area by means of the mesenteric arteries. Blood flowing in a reversed manner loses oxygen. While the results were interesting, this experiment wasn't conducted in the brain. Luckily, Halsey and her team have 500 more years to figure out the details. As of right now, some people experience blurry, double vision, or even blindness after brain surgery due to disruption of the ocular nerves or extraocular muscles. You could also experiment with specialized exercises to strengthen the eye muscles and improve blood flow. But the efficiency of one's vision is based on the shape of the eye, the size of the pupil, and its ability to shift focus. In addition to the aforementioned optical lobe augmentation, the eyes were re-engineered as well. This is a bionic optical lens implant. Thanks, Installation Zero Zero. And this one may be a little bit more feasible with current technology. A Canadian company called Oculmetics Technology Corporation has created a bionic lens that replaces the natural human lens, currently in clinical trials. This process is on the horizon for people of the 21st century, and the implant is surprisingly effective. Oculmetics lens uses 1 100th the amount of energy that our natural lens does, allowing less strain and clearer vision overall. The company claims that they could give you vision three times better than 2020. Imagine being able to see three times better than 2020 vision without wearing glasses or contacts. Reading a book from 60 meters away, even at age 100 or more, this vision increase does approach the Spartans 80-20 vision. And as for the promised night vision, though this may not occur due to occipital low blood flow reversal procedure as theorized, it may soon be achievable through nanoparticle injections. Dr. Hahn of the University of Massachusetts Medical School claims the nanoparticles contain rare earth elements that convert low energy photons from near infrared light into higher energy green light the mammalian eyes can see. And so far, it's worked on mice. Basically, they used a very common procedure done by eye doctors to inject an engineered nanoparticle into the eye directly. It's pure bad scientists, amazing insanity. Okay, installation zero zero, four augmentations down and no Spartan yet. Maybe the next couple augmentations will be a little bit more feasible with today's technology. It says here the fabrication of neural dendrites. Care to elaborate? Nerves, while extremely good at transmitting chemical messages, still have physical limitations. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Due to the natural resistance present in all materials, it means that signals have a limit on how fast they can travel from the brain to muscle. The average nerve conduction velocity for humans is around 80 to 120 meters per second, plus brain and muscle processing time means that reaction time is as little as 21.5 milliseconds. So we're going to alter these structures to transmit information more effectively and bypass the natural human limit on nerve conduction. Since the electrical messages that our nerves transmit through the body determine our reaction time, improving their efficiency in improves Spartan reaction time as well. Installation zero zero. The dendrites are infused with a nanoparticulate superconducting material that carries these electrochemical signals significantly faster than the dendrites on its own. Interns, I hope you're taking notes because that's only step one. The superconducting material is then aligned into a fixed ultrafine fiber within the dendrites via resonant electromagnetic fields. So we're literally talking about re-engineering our nerves, more specifically our dendrites, which transfer electrochemical signals between neighbors cells with a nanoparticle superconductor which is organized internally via electromagnetic pulses in a procedure that increases reaction time by 300% or so. And they did this where? 
And by what biochemical process? This augmentation is performed in the entirety of the central and peripheral nervous system with the exception of the brain. Yeah, maybe we need to spend a few more years in the lab. The Spartan's myelin sheaths also receive an upgrade, improving insulation of the electrical messages traveling through the nerves, allowing them to travel faster and with less signal loss. This augmentation is conceivable to some degree today, but by a different method, namely stem cells. An article in Science Daily explains, specific molecular signals enable stem cells to differentiate into myelin repair cells, which reside in a small stem cell niche in the brain. Once they leave this niche, these repair cells migrate to where myelin damage has occurred in order to restore the affected nerve cells electrical insulation. Currently, scientists are using this knowledge to develop new drugs to treat myelin degenerative diseases such as multiple sclerosis. Technically, this will restore nerve conduction, but not really improve it. I guess a 300% reaction time increase is still science fiction. Today, you may be better off bypassing the body altogether and linking your brain's nervous impulses directly to a wearable exoskeleton. But even then, we have nothing that even approaches the molar armor as worn by the Spartans. Okay, installation zero zero, if you don't mind, I'd like to introduce the next augmentation. As an orthopedic surgeon, carbide ceramic ossification is super exciting. This procedure involves grafting a super strong metal alloy onto the bones to make them nearly unbreakable. Supposedly indestructible. It's been surgically grafted to his entire skeleton. Typically in bone grafting, we use autograft from the patient themselves or allograft, which means that the donor bone comes from another human being. In some procedures, hydroxyapatite of biologic or synthetic origin is used for bone repair and bone regeneration, as are dicalcium phosphates and other bioactive ceramics. None of these are the boron carbide used in the Spartan II procedure. This alloy is an extremely hard boron carbon ceramic and covalent material used in tank armor, bulletproof vests, engine sabotage powers, and the like. With a Vickers hardness of greater than 30 gigapascals, it is one of the hardest known materials. Wow, that is really hard. Behind cubic boron nitride and diamond. First, an exact 3D model of the entire skeleton is created through various imaging and 3D modeling techniques. Then a one-to-one -one replica shell is 3D printed for each of the bones in the body, including even the spine. The back half of the spinal grafts are installed through the back of the body onto the surface of the spine. But the front half? Those plates are to be installed intra-abdominally. Oh, and did I mention there is one graft for every individual vertebrae? Sounds like a lot of incisions. Or perhaps a really big one. And while the end result, if our Spartan survives, is near indestructible bones, there is still a small problem. Bones actually function as a type of organ, producing both red and white blood cells and storing other minerals. If they are encased entirely in boron carbide, they cannot fulfill this function as they would be disconnected from the circulatory system. That makes sense to me. In the Halo universe, this problem is solved by 3D printing micro and macro pores into the boron carbide plates allowing the bones to reconnect to the circulatory system post-surgery. Now, at the leading edge of modern science, we are doing incredible things. Our current imaging technology could create an accurate one-to-one -one schematic for the bones inside the body. It is even conceivable to print in boron carbide, as other ultra-hard carbon-based materials have been successfully printed, including a dye composite by the company Sandvik. And since boron carbide is carbon-based, it is also conceivable that it could graft a bone as we are, carbon-based life forms. This whole process might be astronomically expensive, but hey, Halsey had carte blanche in the name of human survival. Now, the surgical procedure required to attach a full body micro and macro porous skeletal reinforcement system like this would be extremely risky. Surgeons would require access to every bone in the body, very often from both sides. Each bone could be fully encased with a plate on the front and the back. It is possible, and we have techniques that allow us to access all the bones in the body. Even intra-abdominal spine surgery is a thing. There's mm -hmm. nothing funny about this. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can cut you open from the front, move your organs out of the way, and get to work on the anterior portion of your spine. But all at once, pain. It's the other supporting augmentations are required to ensure the ossification doesn't result in extreme disfigurement, injury, or even death. Right. 
So our Spartans have enhanced muscles, bones, and near instant reflexes. I'd say we need to reinforce the connective tissue next. Otherwise, these soldiers are going to destroy themselves. Particular attention was paid to the connective tissues of the joints, muscles, and bones. This is where an array of genetic and biological alterations come into play. In order to reinforce the connective tissues of the Spartans, Halsey and her team re-engineered the chondrocytes, which secretes the matrix of cartilage within joints, and the tenocytes, which secrete and build up the tendon cells. Further genetic engineering was done to their osteoclasts and their osteoblasts, which break down damaged bone and deposit new bone mass respectively, further reinforcing their musculoskeletal system. Modern medicine has experimented with drug-induced enhancement and stem cell and tissue engineering therapies to improve osteoblast, osteoclast, chondrocyte and tenocyte function, but nothing on the scale necessary to reinforce a superpowered Spartan has been achieved. Even if every augmentation up until this point were possible, our Spartans would likely tear themselves apart as their connective tissues are unable to keep up with their strength and speed. For an example of this, check out my video on Ryan Crowley and his pec tendon rupture. And we haven't even mentioned the Spartan neural interface, which essentially links their brain directly to the all-powerful Molnar armor further enhancing their reaction time. I'm afraid that if we don't give science some time to catch up to fiction, Molnir will be tearing up its wearers. Master Chief and his colleagues would enter the suit superhuman and come out looking like bloody superhuman jello. How about one of those Stretch Armstrong dolls? Much more PG. To give you all a definitive answer, I don't think modern medicine has reached Master Chief level just yet. Maybe a few more years. Big thank you to our guest lecturer, Installation00, whose channel has lots of cool Halo content. Be sure to let me know what you'd like to learn about next. And who knows, maybe I'll consider circling back around to cover more on the Halo universe. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe to join the intern army. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho.